everyone, welcome back to Demetra's Dishes. So today I'm going to teach you how to make a twist on the heartwarming classic comfort food. I'm going to show you how to make my lemony version of a chicken pot pie that's going to have a phyllo, a buttery phyllo topping that's going to be really light too because there's no cream or, di or milk in it. So um, first we're going to start by talking about the chicken. So over here I have some roasted chicken thigh meat that has the bone in. All I did, it was really easy what I did actually, I, I just drizzled some olive oil on top, seasoned with salt, freshly cracked black pepper, some garlic powder, a little bit of cumin powder, and lots of sumac, ground sumac. I did that on both sides. I roasted it in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 to 35 minutes. You don't have to worry about being fully cooked because it is going to continue to cook in the filling and like the soupy delicious uh, filling. So that is just going to get set aside to cool down a bit. So that way we can go over the rest of the ingredients. It's so basic and easy and you can switch up the vegetables to use whatever you have in there. But these, this is my favorite combination and you should give it a try and then let me know in the comment section how you did it. So in my pot over here, I chopped up an onion really finely and I, I cooked it in a little bit of olive oil, about a quarter cup of olive oil for about five to 10 minutes until it was nice and soft. You don't want it to get golden or anything like that. Then we have, then we're gonna use some roasted red bell peppers that are in the jar in brine. I always have these in my pantry. Two potatoes, lots of really good quality chicken stock. Make your own or use store bought, whatever you want. Some frozen green peas some whole garlic, and lemon juice. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna dice these potatoes to about one inch in thickness. And that's just so that everything is around the same size and it cooks evenly and quickly. The potatoes are diced. Now I'm gonna grate these three garlic cloves using my microplane grater. I'm just gonna add my grated garlic to my onions and olive oil. And I'm just gonna cook it through just a few seconds, really. Just a few seconds, just so it could warm through just a bit. Be careful not to brown it. I'm gonna increase the heat to medium high. And I'm gonna add my diced potatoes. I'm gonna let my potatoes and onion and garlic cook for about 10 minutes over medium high heat. I'm gonna keep an eye on them and stir them. And I forgot to mention that I have to season them, of course. You wanna season every step of the way with salt and some black pepper. While that's happening, I'm just gonna chop up my red bell peppers. So I keep, ro I keep roasted red bell peppers in my pantry all the time. It's such a great ingredient to have on hand. I'm not gonna waste this little piece over here. So it's such a great ingredient to have on hand. They add really nice, smoky, tender, sweet flavor. I'm just going to chop them up and have them ready. Now I'm also going to chop up my chicken. I'm just going to remove the skin because you don't need skin in this recipe because it's going to be like a in the filling. So I'm just going to chop this up. First I'm going to cut around the bone. Now you can use any cut of chicken that you have on hand. If you have some leftover roasted chicken from the night before or roasted turkey, this is a great recipe to use it in. If you boil chicken to make chicken salad and stuff for the week, if you do meal prep, just take it out and add this in here. I just find that roasted chicken just has so much flavor. So I'm just gonna continue to chop up this chicken. In that time, the potatoes are gonna have gotten, are gonna get a nice golden color and be a little bit cooked through. And then we're just gonna add it all together. So now we're gonna add all of this juicy, chopped, flavorful chicken to the pot, along with the red peppers, the frozen peas. If you have frozen peas and carrots, which is a popular combination sold in the supermarket, you can go ahead and add that in too. We're gonna mix this all up. Then we're gonna add our chicken stock. We're gonna go in and season with a little bit more freshly cracked black pepper, some ground sumac, and this is a really nice tangy, 
berry that's sold in the, in Middle Eastern grocery stores or Mediterranean grocery stores. Okay, so once it comes to a boil, go ahead and taste it and see if it needs more salt. I'm just going to add just a little bit because potatoes absorb a lot of salt and they need it too. So now I'm just going to reduce the heat to a simmer and I'm going to let it cook until the potatoes are fork tender. That should take about 10 minutes or so. So once the potatoes are fork tender, you can test them by putting a fork in there. Keep in mind that they're going to continue to get to cook in the oven, but they're fully cooked as it is. And just like this, this is a delicious soup if you wanted to serve it on a cold winter's day. But we're not stopping here because we are making a pot pie. So we're going to make the thickening agent. So we're going to thicken this with a lovely velvety, delicious, creamy afgolemono sauce. And for that, we have some cornstarch. Now, my recipe calls for two heaping tablespoons. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is what I call a heaping tablespoon, just in case you were wondering. So there's two of those. Then we have some freshly squeezed lemon juice. About a quarter cup is what you need, but make it as lemony as you like. You can put less if you want it to, but this adds a really nice depth of flavor. Let's take that out. We're going to need a little bit of dill. Dry dill is what I always have in my pantry. And then last but not least, the egg yolks. So two egg yolks. I'm going to save the whites for an omelet in the morning. Just whisk it until all the cornstarch lumps disappear. So now we're just going to temper this by adding some of the soup liquid in here to raise the temperature of the eggs so that way they blend in and create a nice velvety sauce and not scrambled eggs. All you need is two or three ladlefuls. That should be good. And now we're going to add this to our soup pot. Just pour it all in and give it a nice mix and let it cook for two, three minutes until it thickens it. So you're going to notice that this thickens very quickly. Look at that. Again, at this point, you can serve this as a nice, rich, heartwarming soup. But like I said, we're making chicken pot pie. So now we're going to move on to the last and final step. So for the last and final step, we're going to cover this with some flaky phyllo dough that's going to be um, buttered and also filled with cheese. So the ingredients you're going to need for that are just a little bit of phyllo uh, pastry. You want to make sure that it's thawed out and at room temperature. It's sold frozen in the supermarket. Just keep it in your refrigerator overnight so it can thaw out. Then leave it on the counter for about two hours before you're ready to work with it so it can come to room temperature. Always let it thaw out in its packaging so that way it doesn't dry out. Then you're going to want to melt a little bit of unsalted butter. And you could use salted butter for this one too. It's totally fine because there's no flavor in the phyllo itself. So, and then you're going to need a combination of your favorite cheese. So I have some grated Parmesan here. You could use kefalotiri. And I have some shredded mozzarella. You can use Gouda. Whatever cheese melts beautifully, go ahead and use that. We're just going to add a little bit of flavor and just body and texture to the phyllo topping. It's going to be like a nice little surprise in between. So now, let me talk about um, how you're going to serve this. I like to make this family style and, and put it in a big baking dish. You could use any 9 by 13 inch baking dish that you would, you would make moussaka or lasagna or something like that in. But if you're making it for like a special event and you're not making it for so many people, or if you are making it for so many people and you want to make little individual bowls, just get any oven safe bowl. And it says that it's oven safe underneath on the bottom. It'll say like microwave, dishwasher, oven safe on the bottom. And you could fill um, the soup in the bowls and then you can make, you can top it with the phyllo individually and just bake it in the oven and serve it. That's a great idea too. Now at this point, this whole mixture can be refrigerated and once it cools down of course and stored in your refrigerator a couple of days before you do this but um, I wouldn't store it in the baking dish, put it in a container, store it in the fridge, warm it through before you um, finish putting it together and baking it, and then put it in your baking dish or your bowl and top it with the phyllo dough. This can also be frozen. I would freeze it, though I have never tried freezing it with the egg lemon sauce, so freeze it before that point if you're gonna do it. But if you have tried doing it and it works, let me know in the comment section down below. We're just gonna put this all together right now 
very simply, very easily, we're gonna open the phyllo pastry. I don't like to go heavy with phyllo. You can put as little or as much phyllo sheets that you want on this. I'm gonna do about five ounces. This is an eight ounce packet. So I'm gonna use almost half of it or a little bit more than half of it. And this brand right here cuts the phyllo in half and packages it into two packages, so two eight ounce packages. If you have the long sheets, that's totally fine. There's nothing, there's no one way to do this. You could use the long sheets too if you want. Just put one sheet at a time, drizzle some melted butter on top, sprinkle some cheese, and keep going. final layer. I'm just going to tuck all of these in and I'm going to pour the rest of this butter over the top. I'm just going to go ahead and brush this so that way the whole top gets a beautiful golden color. Now all of this leftover phyllo that I have, I'm just going to wrap it in the plastic wrap that it came in and roll it up. And then once I'm done, I'm just going to wrap this in some more plastic wrap and store it in my refrigerator and use it for another recipe. Now with a sharp knife, I'm just going to go ahead and score it all the way down to the filling. Just like that. I'm going to cut that in half. This is just going to make it much easier to serve and to slice. There we go. This gives you eight generous portions. So I'm going to bake this in the center rack of my oven. My oven is preheated at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to bake it until it's nice and golden on top. That's going to take about 40 minutes. Then I'm going to take it out of the oven and let it sit on the counter and rest for 20 minutes so that way the sauce can thicken and it won't be too hot to serve because you want it to kind of hold up when you're serving it. And I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. So you have to wait for this to cool down a little bit so that we can get a nice piece out. 20 minutes is the minimum. I would actually recommend 30, 35 minutes, maybe even more, just so that way the filling sets a little bit. It's gonna look like it's a little bit thin, but it gets thicker as it sits. So trust me on that. Let's take one piece out, even though it looks, it almost looks too good to cut into. Look at that. Let me show you what it looks like. Such beautiful colors roasted red pepper, potato, comfort food at its finest, and it's actually pretty light minus the topping. <laughs> mm, that lemony sauce puts it all together, gives it so much freshness. I really love adding sumac to Mediterranean re recipes. You could find it in the Middle Eastern grocery stores or Mediterranean, Mediterranean specialty food stores. If you can't get it, I'll post a link down below where you can find it on Amazon. I feel like you can find everything on Amazon. It just adds more tangy goodness. It's so delicious. It has a pretty, pretty specks of burgundy in there. So, so, so good. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. The recipe, as always, is in the description box below this video, as well as on the website, www.demetriusdishes.com. Make it, share pictures of me on social media. I love to see your recreations. I'm on Facebook and on Instagram, so tag me on there. Let me know what you think, and I will see you all next time. Yes, us.